guys, it's Mark and MTM. Today in the workshop, we have a 2016 Renault Kajar and it's the 1.5 DCI K9K engine. So this came in for a lack of power and the engine management light on. So when we scanned it with our diagnostic tool, it's coming up with an issue with the differential pressure reading for the DPF. So looking at live data, it's telling us that there's one, no sort at all in the DPF, which is unheard of for any of these diesels and that there's no differential pressure. So there's an issue with the sensor and there's a very, very, very common problem with these engines to do with the pipes that go to that sensor. So if you're looking into the engine bay, you'll have to take off the top cover and just here where my finger is, there's a little bracket. And if you feel on that bracket, it'll have a little sensor. And again, if you put your hand a little bit further down, you can feel the two pipes that go to each of the different sensors on the DPF. One is before the DPF and one is after. So what this does is compare those two readings to each other and it comes up with an average which, which lets the car know how blocked the DPF is. But because that can be really fiddly to get down there, I take off this air pipe just to give a little bit more clearance. You can stick your arm down here and kind of feel your way around in order to get at those pipes. In this pipe off, so there's a eight mil Jubilee clip just down here that you want to take off. And this one, you want to be careful you don't want to overstretch this pipe. <clears throat> so there are those two pipes that you can only just about see. There's going to be a little bolt holding on that sensor. So we're going to have to undo that, undo the electrical connector and then get that sensor out so we can have access to those pipes. So with this pipe out of the way, you can put the ratchet around because of the positioning of it you can't see it directly so I'm using a 7mm to try and disconnect the sensor from that frame so unfortunately this is a bit too awkward to get the camera in and see what you're doing at the same time so once you've undone the bolt gently guide it off by your hands you don't want to drop this So there's that 7mm bolt, just put that somewhere safe. Once you've undone that bolt, the sensor will be able to lift away from the bracket and you can see the electrical connector there. You'll have to get a little pick to help prise back the security tab and then you should be able to disconnect it. I'm just going to use a hook to try and get down here, prise back this tab. Shadows from the light can be a real pain when you're trying to do this. Okay, I've got that tab disconnected. So, now it's just these pipes. These rubber pipes have been held on by little spring clips. You can just squeeze them together with your hands if you can get on them nice enough. And hopefully we can get them out. So here the pipe is out. These clips are a nightmare because half the time they're positioned the wrong way around so you can't get on them nice. So you're gonna have to try and push to guide them around and then give them a squeeze. But you can see here this black pipe is completely detached from this section. And there's another split there. So that's why these need to be replaced. But we're not getting any sort of reading from this sensor. So being as we've had to remove the sensor to replace these pipes, we'll replace this sensor as well. So these are the broken pipes. We've managed to get that other broken piece out. And the replacements are all sold separately. So I'll give you the part numbers for the sensor. For the black pipe, and the green pipe. So what's going to be easier is if we assemble this together first of all and then press those pipes onto the hard lines underneath. The pipes are different lengths so you are going to have to match the original. So with the way that this fit is fitted it looks as if it'd be fitted backwards because of where the security clip goes onto. That's partially why these clips are always fitted in the wrong place. So we'll just make sure that the pipes go back on exactly the same as the old one and then refit. Here's the new sensor with the new pipes fitted. 
So when we've put them on, the clips are a little bit higher up, so we can put them onto the hard lines first, and then hopefully get a pliers down to position these clips into place. Again, it's really awkward to see you're gonna to have to feel your way through this job because the only other way to do it is from underneath, and from there you're even more blind because the DPF itself is in the way. So let's get this fitted. So again, feel for the pipes. There you got there on. It's worth mentioning that the hard lines that these rubber pipes fit onto, there is a little notch on them to let you know when they're all the way home. Once you get those pipes on, it's gonna be really awkward to get the clips into position. What I used is this fake um, uh, spring clip pliers. Not sure if you can see the part number on the side of them, but these have been a godsend ever since I got them. They're so handy and they're better than like, the traditional type, the ones that ratchet into place. Uh, they have like, those special grooves in on the teeth. But uh, yeah, really good set of pliers. I recommend you get a pair. Because this would have been 10 times more awkward if I didn't have them. Now I'm just going to reconnect the electrical connector and then put the 7mm bolt back in just to re-secure it to that frame. And we're almost done. But we've put the electrical connector back on here where my thumb is. I'm just going to reconnect. I'll put the bolt in for this 7mm. Again, you're going to have to feel everything because you just can't see it. That's slotted in nice. No. And again, just make sure you catch it with your fingers first. Once you've caught it by hand, you can just final tighten it with the ratchet. Slide this plastic pipe back into place. So now looking at live data, we can see that the differential pressure now has a reading. Before this was zero, and uh, it wasn't changing no matter if we revved or not. So now if we rev, we can see that we're actually getting a reading. So that's a very good sign. We're gonna take this out on road test. We've cleared all the fault codes. So once I've completed the road test, we'll come back, double check on the faults and we're gonna be all done. So we've just got back from road test, everything's fine, the car's got plenty of power, and I've double checked all of the diagnostic codes, and everything is fine, nothing's coming back. When this sensor and those pipes play up, the car doesn't know what the correct pressure is in the DPF, so then it won't go through the DPF regeneration procedure, which is that self-clean. So what will happen is that the DPF will fill and fill and fill with soot, because it doesn't wanna get rid of anything, because it doesn't know if it's, got, if it's within the right limits to do that. So now that everything is working properly, we're getting the good readings from that sensor. The car can just do itself clean as it normally does when the customer is driving. So I hope this has helped you guys. If it has, please drop us a like and give, leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll do my best to get back to you. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you have a good one. Cheers.